The Purge. This is a franchise that I've really enjoyed over the years. Now, it started in 2013 with a movie that wasn't of a massive scale. Um, it was all set in one house for the most part. Um, quite enjoyable and uh, done on a relatively low budget. Blumhouse Studios um, were the ones that were behind this and they're quite good at making movies, horror movies, um, with a, a lesser budget than a lot of your big blockbuster movies go for. Yet they turn quite a profit a lot of times. And in the case of The Purge, it was quite successful. It spawned off many sequels. So I'll get into each movie, but the gist of it is if you've not seen the movies, or let's just recap if you have, um, the concept of The Purge is that it's an alternate timeline in the US. Um, they didn't really go that far into the future, so it wasn't that long after the, the, the first few movies came out, we've actually already caught up with when those futuristic movies were supposed to be set. So we're basically dealing with an alternate history of the US where the new founding fathers of America, it was a, a government kind of on the conservative side, um, perceived that way anyway, that's kind of how it's presented in the film, come up with this thing called The Purge where once a year on the 21st of March, that would be the, the spring equinox, um, coincidentally, there is a 12 hour window from 7pm till 7am where pretty much all crime is no longer deemed a crime. There are limits and it kind of evolves throughout the, the history of it, but um, what that does is that gives people a chance to get things off the chest basically and go out there and just start murdering people. Um, now it's all kind of presented as being healthy for society, all that kind of stuff, but it becomes apparent that this is just the way of the rich getting rich and the poor getting deader, effectively. So um, there's all sorts of socio-political commentary in this. What I kind of like about it is you can come to this from a left-wing point of view, a right-wing point of view, and take something different away from it. You can come to it from a centrist point of view, or, or from the point of view like myself, somebody who kind of transcends the left versus right paradigm, kind of sees it for a phony control system that it is. Um, it doesn't ruin the movies when you're watching it, really. Um, whichever political point of view you come from. Um, although certain bits might, but whatever. So, um, that's the, the concept of what a purge is. Now what I'm gonna do here is talk about the actual movies and uh, break it down, so enjoy. <laughs> So as I was saying, the concept of the Purge movies is that there's this event um, on March 21st every year, 7pm, uh, the citizens of the US get this message, this um, emergency broadcast alert that comes over the TV stations um, and then an announcement is read out saying the Purge is about to commence, it kind of explains the rules and it says bang on 7 o'clock in a, in a short moment. There's going to be a siren, and from then on, all crimes are no longer relevant, basically. Um, and then there's a siren. It's the famous purge siren that you hear. In fact, I'll just play. There's quite a few videos going around um, of, of this. I'll just play you just so you get the gist of what that, that alert is. This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge sanctioned by the U.S. government. Weapons of class 4 and lower have been authorized for use during the purge. All other weapons are restricted. Government officials of ranking 10 have been granted immunity from the purge and shall not be harmed. Commencing at the siren, any and all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 continuous hours. Police, fire, and emergency medical services will be unavailable until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. when the purge concludes. Blessed be our new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you all.
So this is one of those kind of videos where I've had to actually make notes because there's a bit of a timeline here. There's a couple of ways that you can look at this when you're talking about this franchise. You can talk about the chronology of when the movies came out and what what each one is about and so on and how it all kind of fits in with the others. Or you can talk about the actual story chronology timeline. I'm going to cover both here, but first I'm going to talk about, from our point of view, the timeline of the movies and then I'll get into from the characters and the well the movie universe itself that timeline so um basically like I was saying in the introduction our first film The Purge um was probably the lower one of the lower budget I, I haven't checked the budget so I'm not getting my facts and figures and so on but for, from my point of view it seemed like that was the least ambitious of the movies and the lowest budget of the movies it was all set in one house the concept of that was there's this broader thing going on in the country and what happens within this household when shit goes down. And in that movie, um, it's about the Ethan Hawke character. He's a dad and he has a family. And he's a guy who runs a business that provides security if he can pay for it for people who want to lock themselves in their homes on purge night. So you can see how he would be quite resented by his neighbours, for example, because he's profiteering from the, the whole purge thing and keeping people safe, making a lot of money off it. So he's got quite a, an affluent um, neighbourhood and his house itself as well is uh, very nice, all paid for by the purge from the grief that people have had to put up with. But at the same time, it's kind of a noble thing that he's doing because keeping people safe. So he's kind of presented as kind of the good guy of the film but there's obvious um, ethical questions that come into that and ultimately it's not him it's his wife that's really the one that um, you kind of see through I don't think that in a bad way it's not like when they're replacing a male character with a female character the wife, the wife character in this is also very good as well and probably has the least to apologize for as well so I think it's good that uh, that's good it's good casting as well Lena uh, Hedy or Hedy she plays the the wife in that and obviously it's Ethan Hawke that plays the uh, the main character and he's a very good actor but what happens in the film is basically um during the purge night in that house the Sandin household that's the family name Sandin um somebody is being chased outside and comes up to their house and begs to be um protected kind of like a good Samaritan kind of scenario really you know are you going to help this guy and risk exposing yourself to the outside people by helping this guy well basically stuff goes down he's let in and then the people are chasing him don't take too kindly to that same they start braying on the door saying let us in or we're just going to burn you out basically um this house is only safe to a degree we have access to the means to cut our way into your house kill that guy and we're going to kill you as well if you don't if you don't let him back out and the guy's black as well so there's like the whole like racial thing i think the people are chasing him down and kind of presented as like uh, white supremacist types and they're wearing these like freaky masks that's what that's all about basically and it's a good film and then stuff goes down they break in and there's a whole thing you know where um, the guy that they let in is kind of a threat as well and he's got a gun so it's like are we even safe from him and he doesn't feel safe from them so he's hiding in the house there's all cat and mouse thing and there's different levels to it and then the neighbours get involved. It's a pretty good film. I'm not going to ruin it. There's going to be spoilers in this video, but only where necessary. I'll try to keep the spoilers to a minimum. So that's that film. It did very well at the cinema anyway. It came out in 2013, so that's 10 years old now, that movie. And I believe that film was set in the year 2022, I believe. So it was set around about eight years after it no, seven, uh, no, nine, do my maths, nine years after the movie came out. So that's kind of what I mean in terms of these films are set in the future, but it wasn't a too distant future, and we've now pretty much caught up with that. So uh, we're not looking at like a dystopian futuristic franchise at this point. It's now like an alternate timeline. So that was the first movie anyway, like I say. Um, I'll get into the full timeline of it later on. So that was the Sandin family, all set in one house, and that was set in the year... 2021 I'll try to remember this correctly so the next film the purge anarchy probably this and the film after this probably regarded as the two that are the best ones this introduced a new character called leo barnes played by um frank grillo and he's really good in this one of my favorite films with him in uh, he plays kind of um if you're familiar with the frank castle character the punisher from marvel very similar character to that basically um 
unlike the first movie, this movie is a much broader scale. It's set in the city. I mean, it's not just one city that this all goes down. It's the entire country, but it's set in a city. I believe it's L.A., I think, from memory. And um, not the nicest place at the best of times, but in this, um, the purge happens and there's all sorts of different groups of people um, in this. It kind of follows them. And, for example, there's a man and a woman who've broken down just before they're driving from A to B and their car breaks down in the city and it's evident that somebody's tampered with their car and is going to chase them down so they don't have the means to get from A to B before the purge starts. So they're stuck in the city when at 7pm the siren goes off and they're not the only characters in this movie. Like I said, there's other characters with different predicaments going on and they all kind of come together the Frank Grillo character, Leo Barnes, is in a very dark place. It's apparent that um, he is basically going to go to somebody's house. You don't know who or why, but he's on a mission to kill somebody, which is obviously the name of the game when the purge is going down. Um, it becomes evident that what it is, his son was a little boy and he was killed in a hit and run. And the person that did it um, had good lawyers and managed to like get off. Uh, so he, he's not having any of it, so he's going to go to that guy's house and kill him. I'm not Again, I'm not going to ruin it beyond that, but um, that's what he's doing. But in going from where he is to that guy's house during purge night with all these guns and stuff, he comes across a group of people that have kind of come to grief and need protecting. So he's kind of torn between being the bad guy on a mission to murder somebody effectively, even though his intentions are understandable. At the same time, he has to show mercy to these people that really need his help. And he thinks, can I do both? Can I help these people and send them on the way and then finish what I'm doing before my 12-hour window runs out and I have to wait a year? So it's really good anyway. And the bit at the end where where he gets to the person's house, the acting is like so good. People kind of criticise these films and say that they're stupid and so on and that they're B-movie or whatever, or C-movie. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in there as well you can kind of relate to as well and Frank Grillo is a great actor as well um, he does really good in this so that's the purge anarchy anyway and in, in that movie as well there's a movement I mean, this film is set a year after um, the, that original purge movie um, there's a movement, a resistance movement that's growing as well so there's a whole lot of stuff going on there um, the next film, I believe, is set 18 years after. So The Purge Anarchy is set in the year 2022 or 3. I think it's 2023, I can't remember. I've got it written down anyway. I'll come back, I'll come back to that, I'll, I'll, I'll say when it's set. But The Purge Election Year is set quite a long time after. It's set in the year 2040. So we've leapt 17 or 18 years uh, at this point. And um, the, the Leo Barnes character, the Frank Grillo guy, the guy that was trying to get to kill somebody that killed his son in that last film um he's only aged about two or three years between the movies uh, in real life but the film is actually set about 17 18 years after um so it's a bit kind of weird there but you, you don't sweat it too much realism isn't the major focal point of these films so uh, that film the purge election year so this one came out in 2016 and this was actually an election year it was when the whole uh, stuff was going on with uh, trump versus clinton so there's a lot of stuff about the elections going on. It's quite apt uh, that this film came out at that time because uh, that was a big deal as well. This is probably the best film. The point of this film is, so the Leo Barnes character, again, the Frank Grillo character, is now working uh, security, head of security for um, an upcoming, well, a senator who is an upcoming um, presidential candidate and she has vowed to end the purge to overthrow, well not overthrow, but to get elected in and then throw out the, the whole thing with the purge that the new founding fathers of America brought in. Um, but in conveniently, when the purge night happens, the the law gets changed so that, because um, everything was, not everything was made legal. There were certain things, including um, going after elected officials or something like that. They change it in this one so that you can actually go after officials now, conveniently. You can see why that was written into law, because they had an agenda to go after this senator, because she was a threat to the whole purge thing. If she gets elected, and it looks like she's probably going to get elected if she's allowed to live, 
So they change the law so that people can go after her and they really go after her. Uh, they send in mercenaries from like, outside the USA to go after her and Frank Grillo, the character, has to look after her and shit goes down, basically. It's really good. It's so good. Um, and um, I won't spoil it, but it's a happy ending anyway, effectively. And um, so that's those. The next film was actually a prequel because that last film, it was a happy ending. Basically, the purge was ended. Um, the, in, in law, they managed to like throw it out. So after that last film, the purge election year, that's set in 2040. That's supposedly the end of the purge going forward. So every year from that point on, there's not going to be purge night anymore. So the next film was actually a prequel, and that was called The First Purge. This was set in 2017, I believe it was. The concept of this one is that it's back before the purge becomes an annual thing for the whole country. It's kind of a social experiment uh, where it's limited to Staten Island in the New York area. And people don't even have to stay there. They can leave the island when this purge experiment is taken place. But the people that do stay are incentivized financially to stay in the homes and there are all bonuses as well offered to people that go out and engage in killing from memory. So uh, at this point you see behind the scenes with what's going on with the experiment and how it's not quite as it appears because they start to do the experiment and not enough, and it's all broadcast live for the rest of the country to watch with like CCTV cameras and people wear these like glasses or contact lenses or something that have cameras in them so you can kind of see first person like what people are doing and uh, it's kind of like the if you've seen like the the reality tv show it's a bit like that but taken to the next level so um basically what happens is not enough people are killing each other the, the there were theories about how this whole purge thing would go down but it doesn't seem to be paying off to the for the powers that be the people that want to have all the poor underclass getting killed because then they don't have to pay for like their medical bills and stuff um that's part of it anyway so they then the government basically starts stepping in and intervening and um setting up mass murders mass purges because they want to wipe out a lot of people a lot of poor people a lot of people that they designate as un unsavory or whatever um so there's like a whole thing going on there as well and uh so this, this film is pretty good. It, what it kind of lacks, so it doesn't have the same kind of um, characters and actors that you had in the last two movies, or even the last three movies. Um, there's some pretty good ones. There's like um, a criminal, um, like a, a top criminal guy in it anyway, who you're kind of rooting for. And um, he's a bit of a gangster type thing. And they're going after him as well. And he's kind of like the alpha, the, the alpha male character that you had in Frank Grillo, Leo Barnes' character from the previous two films. But um, I think maybe it's just because I've not really seen that actor in, in other things. But he was very memorable. I quite liked his character, to be honest. It was a different kind of take on it compared to what we'd had in the previous film. So it does stick out. It's quite memorable. But um, I don't know. It just doesn't seem to have the same kind of thing that you had with the other movies. Maybe if they brought him back for another movie like they did with the Leo Barnes character. That was a recurring character that you had in the Purge Anarchy and Purge Election year. You kind of have a bit more investment. We didn't have a great backstory either um, in the same in the same sense, which is a shame because I, I thought there was a lot of potential for that character as well and he had a lot of charisma and a lot of, um, you know, what, what you needed for a movie like this. You need somebody with a lot of strength in it that you can kind of root for, like a kind of Rambo type character. So, uh, but that was this movie. Like I say, it wasn't quite as good, but I still enjoyed it. Um, after that, there was another movie, but before the, the the fifth movie came out, we had a TV series. Now, it's interesting this. Um, there were two seasons of this, and it was kind of like an event series, I suppose. Or that's how it was kind of presented from memory. Um, in the UK, you can't actually buy both series. You can only get the first series, and that's on DVD only, which kind of sucks. And it's ten episodes. And that came out, was it 2017, I think? And then there was a... Or 2018? And then there was a second series in 2019, from memory. And those were set around 2036, 7, I think, something like that. Um, the concept of those, the first um, Purge TV series, 
was set over one one purge night as as the movies were so a similar sort of concept and again you had different groups of people um whose story kind of is expanded upon throughout the 10 episodes and in the last couple of episodes those characters all kind of come together um in in that sense when was it set i've got it written down here so series one anyway that's what i'm talking about now it has a lot of flashbacks as well so it explains a lot of where characters motivations come from um, normally when you see a spin-off tv series from movies I, i'm not a fan like say when i was a fan of the marvel movies a long time ago you had like agents of shield and there was a noticeable drop in like production value and 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 so on it, it just felt really cheap with the purge it's not too bad because the movies aren't that big anyway well they are but they're not like blockbuster huge kind of thing in that sense and the tv series was done in such a way it still kind of feels like the movies it's not that big of a drop in in production quality so it kind of works um on oh, no, a series one is set in the year 2027 sorry so that's the first series anyway and um I'd give it a watch if you get a chance. I think it was on Amazon Prime, but you can you can own a physical copy on DVD in the UK. You can get it on Blu-ray outside the UK as well. Um, series 2, <clears throat> so that was set in the year 2036, 2037. Again, it's kind of its own story, but with this one, why it's different is it actually, the, the series begins right at the end of Purge Night, so 7am, and then it, the whole series spans through the course of a year. And that's very interesting. And again, you've got all these different characters with different kind of stories and there's mysteries to it. And it all kind of comes together at the end uh, of that series. Now, what was annoying in the UK, you can't actually own Series 2 physically um, in the traditional sense. You can't just go into HMV and buy it. And I've been looking for it for ages. And it was, I was really annoyed that I just can't physically own it because I like these films. I want to have them and own them and collect them. What I did, what I did find recently, good news for you, there is this Blu-ray set, which I got off eBay. I believe it's Chinese. I mean, look at the writing on there. It's an import. And what's great about it, ignore the fact that it says Region 3. It's multi-region. It plays on my player. So mine is Region um, 2, Region B in the UK. And uh, it's quite nice, actually. It's, I thought it was going to be like a knockoff version. I was quite concerned when I bought it. It was only about £23, I think, or something. Not easy to get, but I got it off eBay. And they're still selling these, from what I understand. And, um, yeah, it's very nice. It plays fine. There's no forced subtitles. The language is in English. It plays. There's no um, region issues, and it's in full HD. It's not a pirate copy. from. If it's a pirate copy, it's a very good one, because I've not really seen Blu-ray cases like this before. So that's Series 1 and 2. So I don't even need this. I can, I'm can. i going to take this and trade it in. So, uh, so that's really good. So that's Series 1 and 2, anyway. Moving on. Because I'm going to talk about the, the actual chronology from the story point of view shortly. Uh, the fifth movie. So that's two series. So we've, we've spoken about four movies and then one TV series so far. The fifth movie, and that's the last thing I'm going to talk about, is The Forever Purge. I've only seen this once and I wasn't too impressed with it, to be fair. I thought it was a bit lame. Uh, this one is set way into the future at this point. So after the Purge election year in 2040... Um, Eight years later, the new founding fathers of America come back and they reinstate the purge, basically. The country is in an absolute mess. Uh, this film has a lot of stuff on the to do with the border or something from memory. It was quite forgettable. Um, and it was something to do with ranchers and all this other stuff. Um, I need to give it another watch, to be fair, to form an opinion. I, I, don't, I don't remember hating it. I just don't remember much about it. I thought it was a bit of a letdown. I remember watching it and thinking that was probably the weakest of the movies. Uh, weaker than the TV series. That, the TV series is fine. But, you know what I mean? There's a, for a movie, you kind of expect a bit more. So it felt like it was maybe running out of steam. That movie came out in 2020. Now, there is a, f a sixth movie that's coming out. And guess what? They're bringing back Leo Barnes, uh, which is good. You know, the guy uh, Frank Grillo played. He's coming back. But that's it. that movie is apparently going to be set in the year 2058. So from context, his two appearances in the movies, the second and third movie, um, were set in the year 2023. And then that leapt forward to 2020, sorry, to 2040. So 17 years. And then we're going to leap another 18 years after that. So it's going to be like 35 years from the first film he was in to the, the, the film he's in here. So he should be like 70 or something in this. Um, crazy. But he looks good for his age, does Frank Grillo. He's looked after himself and kept fit and healthy and um, 
he hasn't juiced at all. Yeah, right. Um, he's got more veins than tough as... Uh, well, yeah. So um, that's the movies and the TV series anyway. And I'm going to try to wrap this up because I don't want this video to be too long. But um, the actual time... This is where my notes come in on the, the timeline of events as, as it is um, briefly. So um, I'm not talking about when the films came out. I'm talking about from a story point of view when everything is set. I will mention what films these relate to, but um, so in the year 2014, the new founding fathers of America, the NFFA, come into power. Now you don't see this. Um, there isn't a movie or a TV episode that's set in that year, but you kind of see it in like the narrative, in like flashbacks and so on. That's it mentioned that they came into power in 2014. Um, two years later, so 2016, the 28th Amendment was ratified, leading to a proto-experimental purge. So that was 2016. A year later, 2017, that is that, that proto-experimental purge, that is the events of the first purge that takes part in 2017. So that movie where it's all on Staten Island, residents are offered £5,000 to stay and see what happens, basically. And people that engage in like murders and so on are kind of incentivized financially to do so as well for killing. Um, so that's what happens there. So that's the first purge. That's the, the film, The First Purge, not the first of the movies called The Purge. It was the fourth movie. It was called The First Purge. It gets very, very confusing. It was a prequel, an origin kind of story, really. So that was in 2017. 2018, you don't see this as such. Um, there's not a movie that covers this, but it's kind of mentioned in flashbacks and so on. 2018, so a year after the first purge, that's when it goes nationwide. So by 2022, so it's been going on for four or five years at this point, that's when the events of the first movie, The Purge, takes place in the year 2022. So that's the Sandin household, the one where it takes all takes place all in one house. Um, that the events of that take place in the year 2022. And at this point, the purge is basically like a national holiday. It's been accepted that it's just a way of life from now on. Um, 2023, so a year after that, that's when the events of the purge anarchy take place. And at this point, uh, again, it's been five or six years at this point uh, that the purge has been around. A, res a real resistance movement is growing to it. So that's 2023. 2027, that's when series one of the series is set. Um, then we leap forward about another 10 years. So 2036 to 2037, series two is set then. And then we leap forward another three years, 2040. That's when the purge election year takes place. That's when that's set. Senator Rowan gets elected as president. And the purge ends by the end of that movie. So it ends on a positive note. It's got a happy ending, that movie. But we know what comes next. Uh, eight years later, that's when the events of the Forever Purge take place. And at this point, that's when the purge has been reinstated. And um, so it's kind of un undoes things a little bit there. Um, and then that's, that's it. But the next movie apparently set ten years after that. That's the Purge Six. Uh, from what I've heard, from, I don't know. Who, I can't remember who would said this in an interview. One of the producers or writers or whatever had said that the USA is completely remapped and tribalized, and uh, Leo Barnes, played by Frank Grillo, is to return. So that will be interesting. Um, really good movie franchise. Like I say, you can take away different messages, different um, things from it, depending on your own kind of political biases or opposition or whatever like that. But um, to me, I think it's not that far away from reality. I mean, we only saw what happened in 2020. People turning on each other. Obviously, it wasn't the scale of these movies, but uh, you started to see a real dark side in people. You know, um, if, if you didn't wear a mask, you should, you should be thrown in jail. Um, normal behaviour, just going outside was, you know, just seen as absolute sin. And um, if you didn't have a, a jab... You should die, basically. You should be killed. You should be thrown in jail or not allowed to work. Well, if you can't work, you can't pay your bills. You can't buy food. If you can't buy food, you can't eat. If you can't eat, you die. So you die for not having a job. And yeah, people believe that. So it's not that much of a stretch, I think, that if this happened in reality, 
don't think it would be that different to uh, <laughs> to what we see in the movies. It would probably be a lot worse. So um, that's the cynic in me anyway. Um, I'd just say it's being realistic, but it's um, it's a stark warning, really, what comes in these what are relatively silly movies. They get scoffed at a lot. Uh, my co-reviewer of the core kind of refuses to watch them. He's heard they're bad, so they must be bad. Um, I'd heard that as well early on after like the, the second one had come out, but then I watched the first two and I really enjoyed them, so it was a pretty much a cinema trip every year after that, every, every movie that's come out. So uh, I'll watch the TV series as well. So, uh, yeah, like I say, um, I do count these as horror movies, so I have included this in the Halloween special um, here because these are the kind of action movies in a way as well, but really they are horror. There's a lot of suspense. You could say more of a thriller kind of thing, but to me it, it's up there. It's Blumhouse. They do horror movies, and this fits in with that quite well. So uh, we'll see what the franchise gives us after that. Like I say, there's a sixth movie coming out, and uh, it sounds to have a lot of uh, promise. So Right, I'll leave it there. So um, come back tomorrow, 7.30pm. We're going to be... Um, well, the core is going to be back on the channel, so... Uh, if you want to see that, um, yeah, check back tomorrow, 7 p.m. and then uh, 7:30 p.m. and then Halloween night itself as well. Same deal. Thank you very much for watching.